I'm Roni, and in this video, I'll be turning this into this. In this video series, I'm building a steampunk strand pierce, and in the previous videos, I showed how I made the oscillating engine and the boiler. So the steam part of this project is sorted. I think the punk part is covered, and in this video, I'm going to focus on the strand pierce. I have this strand piece that I made a few years ago. It's based on the designs of Theo Janssen, and it's a wind-driven strand piece. And if you are interested in winning one of these, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video, where I give a bit more information on that. This strand piece is, however, quite small and uh, light, and I don't think I can just bolt an engine and a boiler to it and think it would work. So in this video, I will show how I designed this strand piece. It is much bigger, uh, it's much sturdier, of course, and it is space for all the extra fittings. It also has some gears. It has a reduction gear system because the oscillating engine runs quite fast, around 600 to 1000 RPM. And I don't think that if I have a machine that has fire and steam and wood, that I want to have it run away. So I have a reduction gear system, and then I also have a gear system where I can change the legs to move forward or backwards, and it's split between the two sides. So it can probably turn as well. So onwards to designing and building this machine. So this part of the project entails a lot of designing and a lot of it has been done on a computer since the wood is cut in one plane. I like using vector graphics, but even more than that, I like using pen and paper. And a lot of my designs is just basically sketching it out and calculating how the wood pieces should come together. So since most of the design has been completed, the next step is to cut all the pieces and there's a copious amount of gears that I need to cut. So I think I should get started with that and try to assemble the thing to see if it will move. All the pieces throughout this whole machine has been sanded and um, some of them I cannot coat in lacquer because it will gum up the gears. Wood and steam does not work well together. So to protect them a bit, I'm going to just rub a bit of candle wax all over the surface. And this needs to be done for all of the gears through the whole machine. This is just a subsection of one side. And also I'm going to do it for all of the legs, especially on the side where there's a lot of steam and water. So they will be protected a bit better and will not seize up because the wood swells. I remade the flywheel and it's much heavier than the previous one. It's filled with all these metal balls, so it will hold a lot of uh, momentum and I think it will work well. I have a very small grub screw that will go into the hole and this will clamp onto the axle. I mounted one on the engine itself to see how well it works and it works much better than the previous version and it runs quite fast. I will have to use reduction gears to reduce the speed and increase the torque because a bit of um, extra power would be nice uh, at the cost of the speed that it currently runs. So this is the current state of the flywheels. I also made this simple gear system to change the direction of the movement of the feet to forwards or backwards and it's based on the direction rectifier that i made for the cat wheel a few months ago and it's the same principle that it uses except there's a lever to shift uh, into the forward or the backwards position so when it's in neutral the 
wheels can spin or the engine can spin freely without moving the legs or the wheels. If it's in the forward position, it turns the bottom axle in the one way. And if it's in the reverse, it turns the axle in the other way. So the input will be constant and the output can then be changed to be either forward or backwards or neutral when it does not need to run. I'm reasonably happy with how this turns out and I have this rough setup to show you how it works when it's running. I can shift the gears while it is running so I don't think I'm gonna add a clutch or anything like that. Uh, it's going to be much much slower than it currently runs with the gear reduction system in place but this is just a proof of concept and I will use this mechanism in the final version. I often get asked how do I design or how did I learn how to design these models and it's difficult to explain. I'm not exactly sure. I used Photoshop quite a lot in the past and for me this is very much like using layers in Photoshop but it's just some physical objects. So all the plates are cut in in one dimension or the main section and this can be seen in this model uh, where all the plates are layered and then they're attached by connecting pieces like spurs or like longer pieces they are all connected. Uh, this is a bigger part but the smaller parts work exactly the same and uh, this is usually where I start. So usually I start uh, especially if I have gear mechanisms with the gears you have to get the layout of the gears right and then they are in one layer and then there's plates to hold them in place and then just small sections to hold the plates in place. And then if you have something bigger, you just extend it. Now the question is, what if you have something that is important in the second dimension? How do you go about designing that? Well, this is an example of that. Here's a space that's open where the whole um, firebox and the burner needs to fit in. And so sim I simply design the first layer where all the gears will be, all the plates that will hold them in place. Now I know there's a space for the burner and this will fit in here. And very nicely, there's holes in these plates designed. And all I need to do is redesign the space to have attachment points that will attach to the larger section. So this is most of the gearing system for the reduction gear and the gears to change direction. Now this gear drives the reduction system. I think it goes down from 64 to one. So every time this small gear turns 64 times, this axle at the back here will turn only once. I have connected it up to an air pump. So the small gear drive the gear reduction system and that in turn drives the uh, two sets of shift gears to shift it into the front or the back position. And that will make these axes rotate either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So here is the strand test and it is almost ready for actually testing out if it runs. So the legs are attached. There's still space for more legs and you can see if I move this the, the legs will run it's currently in idle so i can turn them and they will walk along and i think we could run a test to see if it works and um yeah let's do that let's turn it on So this is the completed model. I am going to stain all the bigger sections dark and keep the legs and the gears white. All the legs and the gears are protected by a layer of wax that I rubbed on it. So I hope that will prevent damage by the water. But the rest of the machine needs a bit of treatment. These are just facts about the engine and a bit of information where everything fits together, uh, where some of the pieces link together and it's in a font that I designed for a previous project that I will link in the description below. So 
let's see if this machine actually runs this time i'm going to use only compressed air So this is the current status of the machine. It works. There's still a few bugs to be sorted out. So I know how to fix most of the small problems. Uh, one of the things is if there's weight on it, the legs are a bit flimsy. An easy fix would be just to tighten all these legs up a bit, add the right amount of washers. And also the crankshafts are uh, on the one side, especially not as nice as on the other side. That's why it veers to the one side. And that's a reasonably easy fix. There's enough power to drive this whole engine or this whole strand piece. Uh, there's so much power that if the gears get stuck, sometimes it will start twisting one of these wooden axles. It almost broke one. Uh, one of the other things that would have been really easy to make it work is just to replace the legs with wheels. Wheels would uh, make this thing run really easily, it's just four wheels and it would work perfectly. But I want a strand piece, not a, not a steam driven car. So I'll try to fix the legs. But all in all, I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that it, it walks uh, kind of almost on the first try. The new flywheel is brilliant. Um, it's really heavy. Uh, it's three times as heavy as the previous one. So that works really well. The engine is really well optimized now. So that works really well. So the optimizations for the next step is, of course, uh, the gears and the legs, but mostly the legs. Uh, for this small model, it is really easy to um, get it to run because it's really light. But as soon as there's weight on here, uh, the problems start to occur. If it is held up while it's running, then there's almost no problems. If you're interested in winning one of these kits, just uh, leave a comment and subscribe and I will contact the person with the most upvoted comment and send the kit to you. But uh, that's basically it for this video. Thank you very much to the patrons. Uh, you make it possible to do some of these ridiculous things. So thanks to you guys. And um, that's where I leave it for now. See you in the next one. Cheers.